Good morning to all of you. Peatlands makes up a small area of the land surface. They are especially critical for the carbon storage and provide other important services to humans. But they face unprecedented threats. We know the causes and the impacts of the different path of action or inaction. These were spelled out in the Global Land Outlook and now in the Global Wetland Outlook. Today, the collapse of communities and the loss of property due to land degradation is a global phenomenon. The disasters from this year alone are worth reflecting on. Forest fire in Mati, Greece, the wildfires in Mendocino County in California, the water crisis in Cape Town, South Africa, and Shimla in India's Himalayas region. The heat waves and droughts across most Europe. How did we get here? More than half of the land we use and live on is moderately degraded. Extreme weather events are turning these areas into real, not just potential, disaster zones. So this is question of our time. How do we motivate people to manage the land better in their own self-interest. Change must focus on two dimensions, individual choice and public policy. To give an example, the pressures on peatlands are immense because of an insatiable global demand for palm oil. How to change this? Government and the market can lead this change, but the most powerful driver of the shift is, of course, consumers changing their habits. Imagine what would happen if the world's over 7 billion consumers committed to a lifestyle change in favor of palm oil from sustainably managed land this year. Imagine if we took such a collective action each year. The markets will stop and listen. Let us not forget that governments set up policies to encourage us to make specific choices. But market fear and resist change. That's how powerful our lifestyles choice are. The need for public policies that will move both the public and markets into managing the land better has never been so urgent. Our convention focuses on reducing and reversing all types of land degradation. This includes peatlands, the world's heavy-duty storage for carbon. But once drained, they become like drylands. They lose their biodiversity, their natural productive potential, and release vast amount of carbon into the atmosphere. The SDG target on land degradation neutrality, which we refer to simply as LDN, is a new practical framework that can help to move degraded and non-degraded peatlands to sustainable use over the next 10 years. Reversing peatland degradation is a priority for some countries in the effort to achieve the LDN target at the national level. Belarus, for example, has restored about 10% of its degraded peatlands. We must encourage countries with peatlands to do the same. The Convention is helping countries to design and plan appropriate interventions such as restoration and rewetting. It is also leading the development of transformative projects and programs. These are interventions that not only offer investment returns, but much more. They deliver additional benefits such as adaptation, water security, and livelihoods. When good policies align with individual choice, finance will fall in line swiftly. It is not a pie-in-the-sky idea. Millennials are redefining lifestyles. The combination of minimalism, disdain for luxury goods and brands, and the desire to do goods are new market trends. Corporations are searching for business models that fit these trends. The LDN Fund is one such model. It promotes impact investments by targeting the use 
of long-term investments such as pension funds in financially viable projects on land rehabilitation and sustainable land management worldwide. Public funds are used as underwrite the exposure of private investment to risk. This blending of public, private and philanthropic resources is filling a vital policy gap that contributed to the degradation of peatlands and over 2 billion hectares of land globally. But we also know that policy incoherence derails even the best of intentions. These steps may seem way smaller than our dream of recovering and keeping peatlands sustainable. But peatlands make up no more than 3% of the land surface and contain twice the carbon stocks in the world's forests. Thus, every inch of peatland we restore to health is a big environmental win. The time is ripe for change. Aligning our work will be critical for success in making degraded lands livable and resilient to future shocks. We can all be inspired by Charles Darwin, who observed that during a transformation, it is not the strongest of the species that survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. Thank you.